Welcome back. This is part seven of the top down tank battle tutorial for Godot 3.0. In this installment, we're going to add some health bars to our enemy units so that we can see their current health. And we're going to add some explosions to our bullets that we're firing. All right, let's get started. In the last part, we made the health bar for the player so that we could see their health decreasing. And we added damage to the enemy tank, but we didn't make it display. So we're going to add a little health bar for the enemy units that are on the screen. And unlike the player where we have it up in the corner, uh, we want this to be a little bar that is above the unit as it drives around so you can see how much damage that particular unit has taken. So we want it to follow along with them. So we're going to make this as a separate scene that we're going to save in the UI folder that's going to be something that we can attach to any enemy unit if we want it to have a health bar. So I'm just going to use a node 2D for this to hold everything. I'm going to call this the unit display. And I don't really know yet what things, what other things we might have these units display, like maybe they have invulnerability or maybe they have, you know, some special powers or things. But one thing we know that they are going to have is a is a health bar. So we're going to add a texture progress here to be their health bar. And this will work pretty similarly to how we did it on the player. It's just that this is going to follow them around instead. Okay, so we're going to put the green progress bar in there for the progress texture. I'm going to set it to 100 value so that we can see the whole bar. So here's my unit display node that we're going to attach to the unit. And here's the bar. So what I really want is I want that bar to be kind of above the enemy unit. And since it's attached to going to be attached to the unit, that means when the unit moves and rotates, so is the bar, right? As the unit goes around, the bar would be doing this too. And we don't want that. So we're going to want to make sure that we disable the rotation of that. But we do want it to move and follow along with the unit as it moves around. So as this moves around, the bar follows it around wherever it goes. And this is also a little bit large, so I'm going to set the scale of this to one half, and we'll see how that works. We can also adjust it on individual units when we attach it to them if they're bigger or smaller. Now, what do we want this bar to do? We're going to attach a script to it. And we want this to do kind of the same thing that the one we made for the player did, where we have the, we're going to have the bar texture colors. I'm going to copy these over there. And the update health bar, I am going to copy some of this, but we're not going to copy everything. We're not going to do it exactly the same. And maybe these will have more similarities. Maybe they won't. I'm not entirely sure yet. But uh, for now, we want these to be uh, the health bar. We'll just change its texture directly. It's health bar dot texture. Health bar dot texture progress is what we want to set to the texture health bar texture progress and we want to set the health bar dot value equals value so that's what that function does now I also want that bar not to display until the enemy takes some damage so when it's at full health I don't want the bar to even be there and so I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm going to get all the children and I'm going to set them to to be invisible when the node first starts up. And then we'll enable them as, you know, depending on what they're displaying as we need to display them. So now if I go over to the to an enemy tank and I attach this Go to 2D here. We want the enemy tank scene, and we're going to attach a unit display to it. So there's my unit display, 
And if I were to run this, um, well, we're not going to see them yet because they are hidden. But let me disable that for a second because I want to... Let's disable that for a second so that we can see what I'm talking about with the rotation. So see, there's the bar kind of rotating along with the enemy node, and I don't like that. I don't want that to happen. So, so what we're going to do in the unit display here is we're going to, in its process function, we're going to set the global rotation to zero. So that way, no matter how the parent turns, this one will always be not turned. And I'm actually going to move this up a little bit too. I didn't like how close it was. So now we can see this in the, in the view, but when we hit run, yeah, there you see it staying on top of the enemy unit. So as it turns, let it get over here to the turn. So as it turns, that bar stays horizontal. Okay, so now all we need to do is have it update when the tank takes a hit. So we'll go over to our enemy tank scene. And because we're inheriting from the tank script, the main tank script, we already know that when we take damage, we're emitting the signal. So in the enemy tank scene, we just have to connect that signal. So we connect health changed to the unit displays update health bar. And that should all be all we need. And I'll uncomment this so that we're, we'll have the bars hidden when we start. So there is no bar. Now we'll start shooting it. Now it's taking damage, but what did we forget to do? We forgot to show it. So we also want to go over here and in the script say that if the value is less than 100, we want healthbar.show. And now, if I run the main scene, when we go over here and shoot it, remember it has 50 health, so me hitting it with five for five. Okay, so the other thing I wanted to do this time is talk about explosions. So I have two different styles of, of explosion animations here in a folder in the assets. And these are actually taken from the original sprite sheet, but it's really kind of annoying to cut them all out in the regions. And so instead I just use the individual frames because we're going to make an animated sprite for this. So we're going to make a new scene and it's going to have one node in it, an animated sprite. This is going to be called Explosion. And for this, I'm going to make an Effects folder. This will be the first of several effects that we're going to make. And animated sprite, you need to create a sprite frames resource to hold the animations, and we're going to have two. There's a smoke explosion and there's a fire explosion that we can use for two different kinds of effects. Uh, both of them need to be set to about 10 FPS, maybe even faster. We'll see what we decide to do with those. And then they also are going to need the frames dragged in there. So you can, what you can do is if I'm on the fire, there's five frames total. I can just drag them over like this, and then in smoke, select those and drag those over. So now I have those two. So this explosion will be able to attach to any object as well, and we'll just trigger it to play if it needs to. So the first place we're going to attach one of these is going to be on the bullets, because I want the bullets to look like they're you know, exploding when they hit something. So let's take one of these explosions and I'm going to attach it to the bullet. And we'll go over here to effects, explosion. So now I have the explosion there. 
But of course, I don't want it to be blocking the, our view of the bullet. I don't want it to show until the end. So we're going to set that to hidden by default. And then in the code, we're just going to have it trigger. We already have an explosion. Uh, we already have an explosion effect. So let me see here. Where's my root bullet scene? Here it is. Okay, so we already have this explode method that plays when the bullet hits something. So what we're going to do instead is have it play the animation. So here, let's see, we want to take this explode and we're going to say, so when the bullet hits something or time runs out, it's going to explode. So we want to set our velocity equal to zero. So it looks like it stopped moving. I want the explosion to happen in that position, not to keep moving. We're going to hide the sprite so we don't see the bullet itself anymore. We're going to show the explosion and we're going to play the explosion. We're going to play the smoke one. Okay, And then when the explosion finishes, it's going to emit its animation finished and that will be when we queue free. Okay. So here's what that's going to look like. Okay. So now whenever I shoot my bullets, they have some nice explosions. They're a little bit on the large side because you know we want to be able to scale these explosions as well. So I'm going to set the We'll set the default scale for this on the bullet, and then we can change it on other things to be a different size if we want. Let's see how that looks. Yeah, that's what we want. Uh, I think the speed is a little on the slow side, so we're going to go back over to the explosion sprite frames and maybe make these 15. We can also alter those on a per explosion basis too, if we ever need to. Okay. All right, so that's all working the way we want it. All right, now one last thing I was thinking about doing, and I'm not entirely sure I want to do it or not, but it was in the UI assets that I downloaded. Um, is these custom cursors here. So if you want to see what it looks like, we're going to go into the map and in the ready, we're going to tell it we want to use that as our cursor. So that is an input function. So input set custom mouse cursor. And we're going to load the one I think looked better was the crosshair black not the outline one, this one. So copy that path, and then you can paste that in there. And then the other parameters you have to this function are which type of cursor it is. So arrow means the default pointer style. So that's the one we're going to replace. And then where do you want the hotspot or the actual clicking point to be? And I'm going to put 0, 0, which is not going to be correct, just so you can see what, it, what I mean, what, it, what it's talking about. So if I hit Run, you'll see now we have the crosshair. But watch what, where the bullet goes when I click, right? Because what happens is it's using the upper left corner of the crosshair as the hot spot, like the tip of the arrow if we were using an arrow. So since the cursor is 32 by 32, we want the hot spot to be at 16, 16. And that's going to give us the best, you know, aim where it shoots straight at the center of that crosshair. And again, I'm not entirely sure yet how much custom cursor stuff I want to do, but it's kind of fun to mess around with right now. And I think that'll do it for this video. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next installment.